It's Wednesday, November 2nd. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Today, a cryptic two-paragraph press release from the Washington Commanders sent shockwaves through D.C.'s football fandom. In short, it's hinting that controversial owner Dan Snyder may finally be considering selling the team. I think it's a big money thing. I think he knows that he's not getting the money for a new stadium. He knows none of these jurisdictions want to deal with him right now. So it could be that the pressure is finally getting to him and he realizes that there's no other option. WTOP senior sports director George Wallace gives us some perspective as he's covered the franchise for years. He reports from the park after practice in Ashburn today. And how are fans feeling about this? We pull in a few voices from the newsroom. Right now, I almost feel shackled to the fandom of the team. I'm mm. I'm loyal to a fault, so I would never give that up. But it would be a team that I really could be proud of if it was under a new ownership. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. And I'm Luke Garrett. There's a buzz, a pulse, a feeling around the Washington Commanders today. Midday, the team released a statement saying that Dan and Tanya Snyder hired Bank of America Securities to, quote, consider potential transactions, end quote. Forbes and Axios are reporting the team is considering a potential sale, and that is much more than just a minority stake sale. It's hard to say what exactly, of course, is going on behind the scenes, but we know one thing for sure. This has never happened before. Joining us to discuss this and other pretty big team news today is WTOP Senior Sports Director George Wallace. Thanks for being here, George. Thanks for having me, guys. How are we doing? Good. You know, it's a pretty big announcement today, um, and it was about as clear as mud. The fact that the team sent any word of a potential transaction, in my mind, is news in itself because that's usually not how they communicate. Can you talk about how this is a really different type of release to get from the commanders? Yeah. And for me, the biggest thing here, guys, is the fact that there was no denial in the report, as we've heard in the past, where I'm never changing the name. I'm never selling the team, which is where we were just two weeks ago. (laughs) But in this report today, there was never uh, a denial. It was that we're exploring all options. Uh, What that could mean, we don't know. For me, that's the biggest step in this is the fact that there was no denial. So, yeah, it's a big difference than we were a couple of weeks ago. Uh, after Jim Irsay made those comments. And look, this could mean anything. This could mean a number of things. But to me, the biggest thing is the wording in this. Mm. And, you know, you mentioned this like non-denial. When the ESPN report came out a few, just a few weeks ago, saying that, you know, Snyder had dirt and other people, they were very quick. I mean, hours after that report came out, they said, nope, this is not the case. Again, now we're not seeing that. Do you think there's pressure on Snyder from other owners? Or what is the pressure point that could be pushing him towards selling? I think it's a number of things. Look, I think that could be one of them. The uh, owners are saying, look, this is just not going to end well for you. Um, I think the stadium is a big deal. Uh, You know, the owners may not even, uh, he may realize that he's not getting the $200 million or whatever it is from the owners. They usually give new teams for a stadium. Remember they, they lend him some money a couple of years ago to to get it to, to buy out the uh, minority partners before 2021. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a big money thing. I think he knows that, He's not getting the money for a new stadium. He knows none of these jurisdictions want to deal with him right now. So it could be that the pressure is finally getting to him and he realizes that there's no other option. Uh, It could be that he maybe want to sell a minority share of it to get some cash to help look for a new stadium. Or it just literally could be that uh, the Mary Jo White reports coming out. Other reports are coming out. It could be that, you know, we know what's in those reports and this is not going to end well for me. So I'm going to start exploring everything right now to uh, unload this thing. So I think a number of options are on the table here, but the fact that this actually came out, the statement came out is a, is a pretty big deal. Now, there are a lot of Commanders fans that are kind of licking their lips at the prospect of you know losing Dan Snyder as the owner. You just mentioned all the, the amount of uncertainty here. What would you tell or caution fans who are possibly really excited about losing Dan Snyder? What would your advice to them be at this point? Oh, yeah. I mean, all the stuff you see, I mean, people are talking about planning a parade already if he's gone. I mean, that's that's how, <laughs> you know, that's how. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That, that's how that's how that's where we are with this right now. So I would caution everybody that especially in that article that says this could even be for sell, for exploring an option to selling a minority stake. Now, the question you ask is, well, who the heck is going to want to get into business right now with Dan Snyder? Who's going to want to buy a minority stake in this? So you could also look at it as which is other situations we've seen before where you could buy a certain percentage. And then after a couple of years, you have the option to buy the rest like uh, Ted Leon just did with a Poland. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen that before. But again, if you if somebody like a Jeff Bezos, let's say, who the NFL, you know, really wants in this league and he's he's got his own night of the week now, Thursday night football on Amazon. You know, if he comes up and, you know, this team's worth six billion dollars, you write your check for eight billion dollars. All of a sudden, things may change. So right. I think you caution fans that this is the biggest step we've seen so far and the closest that we've ever been. But he could also just put, be putting this out there, guys, just to get people off his back. And say, mm. we're going to explore this, okay? And look, fans, nobody's going to believe anything until it actually happens. So, <laughs> so uh, <true. laughs> I would say just beaten and battered. You know, let's just caution until – Till you see something. Yeah, right. And we thought the biggest deal was when he changed the name, which people had been wanting to change for so long. And he famously said, I'm never going to change the name. And we both know, George, and, and you hit on this already, but I just want to make sure we're hammering this home. That was a financial decision. All of a sudden, when the, the sponsors started pulling out mm. Pepsi uh, to name yeah. one, saying, you know what? You're not changing the name. We're out. All of a sudden that Dan Snyder was persuaded to change the name and it was a pretty quick move after that, um, that he announced at least they were going to consider changing it. So it's hard to believe that this is not a financial reason, um, even if it is a a minority stake. I wanted to see since you were in Ashburn today, you are in Ashburn today. um, Is there a vibe around the park right now? Is anybody talking about this? Uh, they are, but it's, but it's, but the players have said that they've Megan, they've maintained the same thing. It's like, look, this is, Above us, we're paid right. to play football. Yeah. Uh, we hear it, yes, but we don't talk about it. And I think uh, Taylor Heineke just told us that, you know, Ron Rivera does a really good job of getting them to just focus on football. And the team leaders, Terry McLaurin included, basically said the same thing. Look, yes, it's out there. Everybody knows it. Come on. It's everywhere. Right. Uh, but he said they don't sit in the locker room and talk about it. So that is – he said that, that they're doing a good job of just focusing on on playing football and getting ready for a 6-1 and one Vikings team, which is what – they're supposed to say at this point, they obviously, you know, what else are you going to say at this point? But well, yeah. they do hear it. It is a distraction, just like everything is a distraction out here and has been for a long time. That is exactly what I was going to say, George. It's like that's what they should be focused on. That's what every football franchise should be focused on, not congressional investigations. <laughs> what other right. owners think of their owner, mm. possible, you know, a report coming out. Um, it, yeah, I mean, what, getting back to football is why these fans want Snyder gone in the first place. Mm. Well, George, we can't let you go. Without asking, do you think Snyder's going to sell a team, yes or no, on a yes or no answer if possible? Of course, you're being held to this answer, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Heard it here first, folks. I do. It's a multi-billion dollar yeah. deal if this thing happens. So, George, I mean, you've seen, I mean, you've been covering the NFL for so long. You've seen teams be sold before. Is this anything that could happen quickly? Are we talking about months and months and months mm. before we actually see an announcement of who this might be if it's happening? I think it's going to be some time because you also use the the learner situation with Major League Baseball. They announced early in the season they're exploring the possibility. I think we're getting close to that. Mm. They also knew owners have to be approved by the league. The same deal, 24 of 32 votes. Um, okay. You know, But, again, it's like I keep using the Jeff Bezos example. I mean, that's a guy that, you know, a lot of fans really want to see him buy this team. And I think if, if that were a situation, you know, that would be a quick approval, I would think, from the NFL owner. So mm. it is going to take time. They do have to go through the whole process uh, but I think that, you know, we're closer than we've ever been to this happening. And maybe, you know, I mean, a number of things could be going on behind the scenes, but I, I think that, you know, this is the closest we've ever been, but with today's statement. Well, George, with so many questions still unanswered, thank you for giving us as much clarity as possible, you know, <laughs> on this big question. We thank you. You got it, guys. And coming up, is this the announcement that fans have been waiting for? We talk with two huge Commanders fans from the newsroom about what questions they want answered. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602 changing lives. Explain your DNA on on 10 cases, man. You're inside the police interrogation room with the alleged Potomac River rapist. I'm not guilty on any of this stuff. So calm, so reasonable. Could this be the man who terrorized women for nine years before murdering a brilliant scientist two decades ago? Experience one of the most fascinating true crime podcasts available. Join crime reporter Paul Wagner for Unknown Subject, season three of WTOP's American Nightmare series. Search American Nightmare Podcast on all podcast platforms. 
obviously when this news hit, it hit like a shockwave across the Commanders fan base. And here to kind of give us a feel for what's going through the heads of Commanders fans, we have Sean Anderson and Thomas Robertson from the newsroom. Thanks, guys, for being here. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to start, when you saw this kind of vague press release, what did you initially think? I thought of Al Michaels after the 1980 <laughs> USA victory over Russia in, in the Olympic <laughs> hockey. And I thought of him saying, do you believe in miracles? Yes! <laughs> really? It's that, that strong. It is that strong. Thomas. So it took me a second because the first thing I saw was a text from my roommate of a Reddit post that like kind of bubbled up before the press release actually came out and everything, mm. kind of speculation and Years and years of trauma as a Washington football fan led me to believe it's not real. This isn't even real. That's the, what I thought. Yeah. I saw it's going to be true. Yeah. And I saw the Forbes story and I'm like, no way. It's not real. Just so much denial. I just can't allow myself to believe it. And then I saw the press release. And the first thing I did was text my brother and my dad. And I was just like, it's happening. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, what's going on? Because I heard Thomas say in the newsroom, it, it, they wouldn't have put something out like this for maybe a minority owner deal, right? That, that's what you said. And as soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, this is a little bit of a weird communication. But, Sean, how big of a deal is this? I mean, just everything this city has been through mm-hmm. with this team, we're talking, you know, the name for so many years, these investigations, sexual assault allegations. I mean, what would that mean to sort of have that clear out? I mean, I, is that even... How you feel about it? Like it would be a rain cloud moving off of Washington. It, it would be a, a, the rare cleansing in this city. And and think about this. If you are the person who buys the commanders from Dan Snyder, you have goodwill for a decade, right? Mm. I mean, they play in the worst stadium in the NFL. Now, all RFK was not a great football stadium, but the fact that the the ownership was you know, Jack Kent Cook and he was really into it and Joe Gibbs coached, it became a special place. Mm-hmm. So even though they, we might get stuck with a bad stadium for a, another decade or so, the new owners will come in, they'll, they'll give a, a complete feeling that – people will start showing up to FedEx Field again. I mean, I think uh, they could get back to sell out crowds pretty quickly. Mm. In other words, Dan Snyder is the sole reason for all these problems that we're seeing. Is that what we're feeling right now? Well, I mean, think about it. Think where the franchise was. They were only a few years off a Super Bowl victory when he bought the team. They were a playoff team the first year he owned it. And here we are 20 years Mm. later. They've gone from arguably the most valuable franchise in the NFL on par with the Dallas Cowboys and they moved down the ranks. So, uh, yes, <laughs> in a word. <laughs> Thomas, what questions do you have? I mean, obviously, there's a million questions, but like, what's what's kind of stirring in your head right now? Is it really going to happen? Obviously, that's what everyone wants to know. I mean, they put this out there, and it's like, okay, the first questions everyone's saying in the newsroom: Is it a minority stake? Is it the full stake? At least it's a sign that he's considering it. But we all know how stubborn Dan Snyder is. So that's really the ultimate question. There has to be something for him to put out that statement. Either the Mary Jo White investigation has been completed and he knows what's in it. Somebody may have said to him, Dan, there are 24 votes out there. We don't want to have the vote. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just start the process? Something is going on that we don't know at this moment. But but there's definitely something out there. Commander's fans have been through so much. If he doesn't sell and he remains the owner. What would that mean for the fan base? Would that be like the, I don't know, the stake that would kill the fandom? I, like, what's yeah. at stake here? No, I think a lot of us have been through so much that it's it's almost par for the course, which is sad to say. Um, for me, I'm always going to support the team, but, you know, it, it's just one of these things where even now I'm not – fully getting my hopes up until until it's official. You know what I mean? It's totally a Commander's fan. Like, I, right. I can't allow right. myself to believe it. I have not stepped inside FedEx Field during the Dan Snyder era for a Commander's slash previous name football team wow. football game. Mm. I might start <laughs> if we see something happen. That is huge. I mean, just I just want to kind of capture just this feeling, this like a little glimmer of hope that people have. And it's bad that it's one guy that really has just dominated this last 20 years of losing and scandal and all this stuff. But it, it's like a psychological, it almost feels like we're having like a therapy session or something <laughs> where you're like, gosh, what would even, what would the team even look like if it had a new owner? Yeah.
Yeah. It would be a totally totally new beginning. It yeah. really would be. It would be something – I mean, he's owned the team for my entire life as a fan. So to get rid of him, it would be finally a team that I could – like right now I almost feel shackled to the fandom of the team. I'm, mm. I'm loyal to a fault, so I would never give that up. But it would be a team that I really could be proud of if it was under a new ownership. And as fans, who do you want as an owner? Maybe not a specific name, but what type of owner do you all want? Wow. You know, I grew up near Pittsburgh, so the Rooney family has owned the Pittsburgh Steelers from the very beginning back into the 30s. So my experience growing up near Pittsburgh as a football fan is the complete opposite of my experience as a football fan here in Washington. The the, the Washington football team has been the anti-Steelers. I would mm. love to see, you know, obviously a well-heeled family, but somebody who who's really passionate about the sport and is really not just looking to for an ego boost or something like that. Somebody who who's passionate about the sport who come who will come in and and embrace the community as a whole and and just restart that process of of making Washington fall in love with the football team again. Yeah. Thomas couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, the exact same thing. Somebody who's passionate about the team. Who, who recognizes the history of this franchise. It's such a proud, proud franchise, and to restore that feeling is just something that I think everybody in Washington wants. Sean, Thomas, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts and feelings. <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. And it's a pretty full show today. Usually we have the DMV <laughs> date segment on Wednesdays, but we're going to skip that and have that for you guys tomorrow. Don't so that, worry. Yeah, but don't worry. So that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. We're sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602, and our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate the show if you get the chance, and let us know how you feel about this potential sale. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, we are, of course, at dmvdownload.com if you want to be a VIP listener. And you can check us out on social media. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 1077 FM in Virginia, 1039 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at WTOP.com on the WTOP and on the WTOP News app. Have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow.